I crashed doing it, like doing the side lap and I crashed. I no, I mean, I'll never know what happened. I crashed yeah. and I endoed and hit my head and yeah, just lights out for four weeks, dude, coma. I wonder like how many how many kids at any level if they had that amount of attention on their bike if you're the kid that gets 30th 20th 15th yeah. Yeah. if you if you put them on a bike that was super capable and could help them run up front if they would automatically be up front if they're no i don't think runners. so i don't think so i think i probably hurt them because you like if so? you only ride good stuff then yeah. when something's off you're gonna be terrible dude like i mm. think you need to freaking earn that it's probably good for you yeah. I mean, look at, I mean, guys, there's, I mean, pl- like there are guys have done it. Tickle, Brock Tickle went pro on a 450 riding just the, just the 450 class with a, like a, this is a modded out 450 and he ended up top 20 racing and got a pro team ride. Mm. So it's possible. Yeah. It's just like, you got to just, you just got to do it on a 450. It's hard mm-hmm. to do it on a lights bike. I would agree with that, man. I'm, yeah. I, I was pushing like, you know, maybe like 165, 170 at a, yeah. uh, at a high school. And like, man, I'm telling you, like, Riding a stock bike versus like you know some ki- some guys that were twenty pounds lighter on a mod bike, it's so difficult in the two fifty class. But when you move up to the four fifty, yeah. it's such an even playing field. Which I my fat ass yeah. likes that much better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, yeah. So 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 moving forward again to to what you're doing now. So are, have you been working with like a lot of amateur kids when you're doing a lot of this this training from afar, virtual training or training in person? Like um, how, how's that how's that work so- out? I was doing a lot of, I'm still training, but I mostly do private training now. So it's kind of, it just kind of, kind of come and go, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I do work. I, I enjoy working with beginners the most though, because they're the funnest to work. I love working with that kid who's just riding for fun. There's like, what can I do with this man? Like, where's yeah. it go? It's so much fun, dude. Yeah. So like, cause you can take any rider and show them the basics of like, here's how you hold a dirt bikes, like handlebars. Here's how you make a mm-hmm. turn, like do this to kind of do that. Like, here's how you give it input. And then they let, let them take it the rest of the way and, if, and see how good they get. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure they, they appreciate cool. your input too. As somebody that had, um, you know, uh, um, a, an injury that kind of put them out, like I'm sure they, you have so much good insight for them on, and like on the mindset or body positioning to help them, you know, yeah. uh, stay, stay away from something like that. So I'm sure that's, yeah. that's a huge plus for when you're training. Yeah. The approach I always push is just, I, I always tell people like to shoot to progress at like a 1% a month or something, just cause like if the only thing holding you back from, ge- from getting as good as you want to be, is just either giving up or getting hurt, dude. Like yes. if you really think about it, like injuries, are, injuries are the only thing that really sets you back when you're taking that road to the top. Yes. And so it's pretty hard to avoid injuries, but if you, if you're constantly like weighing out risk and rewards, I think you can, I think you can avoid a lot of stupid mistakes. Yeah. So I always tell guys, I'm like, just ride simple tracks and just, and just have fun and see yeah. where it goes. Cause you're, you're going to make it just where you, that's the, your best chance of success are going to be that way anyways. Yes. I so, definitely agree with that. Yeah. I, that's what I always say. That's awesome. So, so um, I want to get back just a little bit farther too. So, um, you, you know, you're, you're a pro and then you approach that, the, that race where you ended up getting the injury, walk us through like really what happened and um you know and, and and what those repercussions were that led to led you to where you are now yeah dude cool so um i um i just come off houston fifth place and so like my, at that point i knew my like i was actually i was actually pretty i wasn't even that pumped with my ride i was like i could have did way better because i was running i was i should have got third like in my in my head i should have got there because my, my pace was on i was on track like i was in that position and then i just got arm pump and fell back I yeah through the parachute and i was just got so i was so freaking nervous yeah. dude. like you can't what, imagine what year was that 11 2011 11, okay, okay. like i remember walking out like mm-hmm. when i walked out like through the whatever like under the stadium and then stewart was racing that year too and they were playing his intro song and like all the fans and i was just like oh shit dude that's what they mean. i was like oh dude <laughs> like it didn't, it didn't hit me all like i was riding tracks so i was cool and i'm like oh dude i'm like all right i was getting pretty real <laughs> but like get, just get like talking about like getting used to stuff like that's something that you have to like get used to and i wasn't used yeah. to it yet so i was just like dude that's eighty thousand people screaming for yeah. what you're about to do dude that's i can't even imagine that pressure yeah so it was it was it was quite a bit of adjustment but after getting through the night i'm like oh damn i, I think i got this i'll figure it mm-hmm. out yeah. So going back, I, I was ready. I was ready to go. And then I, I went home and we had a week off before Atlantic. So it was a West coast round. Mm-hmm. And during that week that of practice, they were calling for rain at that West coast round. And so mm-hmm. it had been raining all week in California and we were, they wanted to get some mud practice in. 
And so I was like, yeah, I'll ride anyways for just for whatever. But I ended up crashing that week and breaking my collarbone and I missed mm-hmm. Atlanta. And so it was just a dumb mistake. I just freaking fell and broke my collarbone. I flew to my doctor up in Northern California. I got my mm-hmm. collarbone plated up. I was back on the bike in like literally two weeks or something. Oh, and wow. I was cool. back. I was back. Or no, not, it was like maybe I've been like 10 days. I got back on the bike pretty quick mm-hmm. because I wanted to race Daytona so bad. because I love yeah. sand, dude. Yeah. I, I, I was like my favorite thing to ride in on the big bike was riding sand. So I used to practice in sand every single day. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted, I was like doing everything I could to make it Daytona. Yeah. And that whole, after getting back on the bike, I was riding the best I've been riding all season long. My lap times were great. I was, I was freaking feeling awesome. Bobby didn't want me to race Daytona. He thought it was, thought it was too soon. And he, but he had no reason not to let me ride. Cause I was riding so well. Yeah. So I go, we fly to Daytona. Everything's good. Mm-hmm. Um, first, First time practice, I actually got in. I was I was sitting in. I was on the board at fifth, and like at Houston, I think I qualified like thirteenth or something. Yeah. So my 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 time qualifying was terrible mm-hmm. at, at Houston. It wasn't good at all. But I started to figure it out by the time I got to, to Daytona. And so I was sitting like in fifth, and I was so I was freaking riding good there. And then, um, yeah, second practice, something. I, this is where it's. It's I, I crashed. I don't know what, dude. Apparently. You know how you do like one slow, one fast lap when you're doing time practice? You see yep. guys do it all the time, yep. slow, fast. Yep. Uh, my mom said I was, and this makes me so mad. I was, I was doing a slow lap and I crashed doing it, like doing a side lap and I crashed. I, no, I mean, I'll never know what happened. I crashed yep. and I endoed and hit my head and just, yeah, just lights out for four weeks, dude, coma. Oh man. Yeah. That is so freaking scary. Dude. That's insane. Right. And it's, it's yeah. just, it doesn't, I didn't even crash hard. Dude. It just, my mom, my mom told me it wasn't even bad. It's just, yeah. it's just, the, it's just bad. It just bad luck just the right thing whatever so yeah oh man so so what was that recovery like coming out yeah, of something so like that? that that's the, that's that's <laughs> insane man yeah so um i hit the ground um the minute i hit like from at the, at the track i was in a coma um mm-hmm. I, I they introduced the coma at some point i was in it for about four weeks they mm-hmm. pulled i got once i got out of it they i went to a rehab rehab facility re- re- rehabilitation center in atlanta georgia called shepherd mm-hmm. center Okay. Um, it's like, it was like top, it's the top 10 in the country. I, um, nice. stayed there from, so I was in the coma the whole month of March. This happened March 5th, the injury, the whole, the whole month of from March till sometime, um, yeah, early April, I flew to Georgia mm-hmm. on like a med- medical flight. And then start, from there, I started doing just intensive rehab, which began with just sitting up with, uh, like learn how to just figure out where I, even where I was like, I, I couldn't talk for a long ass time, dude. Mm-hmm. like, I injured the right side of my brain. So the entire left, I was just injured. Like my motor skills were basically damaged. So my yeah. entire left side was basically flaccid or paralyzed. If you would call it that. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't even know where I was for like, I mean, I was so, I mean, can you imagine being in a medically induced coma for weeks? Yeah. Like all those drugs. I mean, I don't know where I'm at. I'm just kind of like observing pretty much is all I'm yeah. really doing. Were you, so, were you like, were you like cognizant of what was happening around you? I mean, or like, or I you, was, you were just confused. A little so bit? my inner dialogue was there, but I just, I didn't even know. I didn't know what was even, I didn't even know if I was, I didn't know I was, I didn't know how I was hurt or why I was hurt. Mm. So there's, there's a medical term for this and I don't, I don't know it. I, I, but you could look it up okay. and it's some kind of thing for like being in denial, like when, like some sort of injury where you're in denial. So I was kind of laying there. I really didn't even realize I was hurt. I kind of thought that. I was just there because they were just over looking at me. So I just figured I would get up and we'd walk out in a few weeks. and would be cool. And then I'll, it, it took me a minute to really understand what actually happened. Is what I'm okay. getting at. Yeah. So yeah, I was caught my, so like in my head, I'm like, okay, yeah, something bad happened, but yep. I'll be cool. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Okay. So it took yeah. some minute for everything to kick in for you. Totally. Yeah. Totally and by a minute, I'm talking about like, yeah, like a month and a half or so, you know, so yeah, just at first it's kind of it, that, but that, all that crap, just like, that got blended together and it's yeah it's almost like saying you know, what was like freaking kindergarten like and first you just like it just you know it just it starts clicking and all of a sudden you're in fifth yeah. grade and you're like oh yeah okay yeah oh man that's crazy because like the memory i think it's something about the brain rebooting it's and you're on so many drugs that are inhibiting memory formation that you just yep. can't the memories are there but they're in the wrong places and i can't really tell where they are and it's weird you know do things like pop back for you a little bit yeah like, you I mean, memories all the time. Of, yeah okay yeah that that's that's what dude I was so i net like i I was in that coma uh, when, where I got hurt. I got, they took me to Halifax, um, ha- the Halifax ICU hospital yeah. trauma center in Daytona, Florida. And I spent all four weeks there. And mind you, I was in the coma the entire time. I was not 
talking to people at all. Mm -hmm. And I went back there to get, cause they, when I, when I first got hurt, they, um, had to do brain surgery on me to take a piece of your skull off to tilt your brain swell. Yeah. And so I have this, like, you can't see it, but I had a massive scar that was around the side of my head. Okay. And I went back there nine months after the injury to get the bone flap put back in uh -huh. on a cane. I could talk. I like kind of, I knew what was going on yeah. and I recognized all the nurses, their voices. I was like, Oh shit. I know this guy. Yeah. And I, ne I was, I've never seen a sit, but I knew who his voice was. And so it was weird, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. So that like there, so there's some stuff that for sure is there, but I just like, I never probably filed the memory correctly or some shit. You know? Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's gotta be such a weird feeling to like hear somebody's voice and like yeah, I know them, but I don't know them. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's weird. Yeah. Oh, so so what's what's the rehab for something like that when it's when it's a brain injury like that? What's the you know if, if we break a, a wrist, we know rehab's more physical. Like, what do you what do you do to get that right again? It's just it's just it's like learning a new skill. It's 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 called neuroplasticity. And it's mm -hmm. rewiring of the brain, mm -hmm. and basically you're just doing. You have to do things and you have to retrain the brain how to, cause like what's happening is muscles are firing against each other and things aren't working. It's like, it's like if I told you to try to move your ears or something, you'd be like, it, well, you would just, you would kind of, you, you would, it would be a weird question to be like, I can't move my ears. How do you know you can't pull? You can, you can So there's yeah. no connection there. You can just can tell. So my whole left side felt like that for a little bit. Okay. So it was just a matter of like, you know, do it this way. They, they use certain things to, to um, facilitate muscles, like a lot of e stem to facilitate muscles and even I did there was periods of time where I got Botox injections to um hmm. to um actually relax muscles because they were so tight to like okay. strengthen other ones. Yeah. And there were times where I used I couldn't fire the muscle at all. So they used E stem and I would just think about firing the muscle. Yeah. There were things I did were called mirror box there where I'd put my right hand in a in a box or my left hand and look at a mirror and you would imagine your left hand moving and just that visual feedback like is freaking therapeutic in the brain. It's, yeah, it's it's all mental. So that's where the wow. a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff I do with motocross training is a lot of the stuff I learned in the head injury because I'm like, dude, there's so much you have no idea what like you can fix so much stuff you have no idea you could even do. That's actually that's insane to me. Yeah. So it that's was insane, it was man. As, as as terrible as it was, it was kind of it was interesting at the same time. Like I learned a ton. Man. Yeah. That's super cool. And again, you can yeah. apply that to the training now. It makes you that. Yeah, and then I had, and I had to, right? Because it was, I had this period of time where I could afford really good therapy. And then at some point it's like, Hey, you just got to go figure it on yourself now because yeah. you can't do it forever. Oh, for, for so, sure. I, so I just did, I, I absorb, I just learned as much as I could and talked to people. And after a while I was like, Oh, we're just for him. We're just training hard while we're really doing. It's kind yeah. of just breaking things down into the very little steps that you can accomplish successfully over and over again. Mm -hmm. Until That's you right. build that, until you build that path up, you know, like it's like building a routine, like a morning routine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, or learning a new job at work or something. You just like build that pattern. Do you get it? And then once you get it, you're solid. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Seat time. But you got to do that for everything. You got to do that for <laughs> yeah. the entire left side of your body though. So it takes yeah. forever, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can only imagine, man. Yeah. The fact that you're able to come out of that and, and, yeah. you know, get back to your, to your everyday yeah. life, man. That's just, yeah, that's I mean, all rad. I mean, just the fact that I can talk to you now is actually impressive because I mean, yeah. one of the first goals I had, because I mean, when I, when you say left side, I meant like even my, even my, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to eat food because I couldn't swallow properly. Ooh. So I couldn't talk. You couldn't understand my speech at one point. I couldn't yeah. order my own food like the cafeteria. So the fact that I can even talk now is actually impressive. That's so, phenomenal, man. Yeah, are there, I mean, are, is there any like residual from that or are you pretty much all <clears throat> clear bill of health moving forward? I mean, so, uh, I mean, I, there's really, I've had this conversation with therapists before and mm -hmm. you really never fully, like the recovery is a very relative, like, it's like, what is, you never fully recover from any injury. You kind of just, you just, you get to a point where you can compensate past whatever was bothering you before. Yes. So yeah. you kind of just get to wherever you feel comfortable at and then you say, are you recovered? I mean, I feel recovered because I'm doing, I have my own place I do whatever I Nothing's really yeah. holding me back, so I'm yeah. recovered. So I call it recovered. That's that's. But of course, you're saying I still deal with, but everyone deals with stuff, you know. So that's yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. Just that's just life, man. You know. Yeah, At all of our most awesome motocross racers, we've got something that's ailing us. That uh, we gotta, <laughs> yeah, we've all we got scars right. and aches and stuff, dude. It's yeah, <laughs> exactly. so it's no, something else like that. So it's no big deal. Exactly, man. But yeah, that's, 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 that's incredible that you're able to come overcome something like that. Cause you know, I mean, there's so many people out there that their stories don't end up as happily as yours or as successful as yours. So yeah. the fact that you're still doing this, man, is it's phenomenal. Uh, so what's, what's the next step for you, man? Like what's the next step in life? What's the next step with what you're doing with training and what you're doing with this, uh, this online breakdown of things? Like, where do you see that? Where do you see this? All so going? 
I've been, I've been, I've had this idea for a long time and it's, mm -hmm. it started out with um, just, it, I didn't like restarting after motocross, was, you know, I was like, well, what do I do now if I can't ride? What else, I don't yeah. know what else to do. So, and my dad kind of talked me into this. At first I was just going to go, I was really into physical therapy because I've learned so much. And I really liked how I'm a, I would consider myself like a caregiver. I like helping people. Yeah. It's kind of why I like doing the training stuff too. So, but I, um, my dad kind of talked to me out of the college. He's like, why don't you just, go? he's like, you, you became pro motocross. That was insane. You could do it again. If you wanted to, you could, you could become an, like another successful project. If you did, if you just applied yourself to something else. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, how can I recycle this 15 years of experience into something? Because there's knowledge there. It can't, I don't want to waste it. That'd be, that'd be stupid. So I'm trying to find a way to make the injury worth it, dude, is my yes. goal. Is like, if I can go back and be like all that, all that physical therapy and all that headaches of all the, it was all worth it. Cause now I'm doing this. Yes. So I'm calling that destination IT, which is my initials. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm kind of documenting the journey of me getting there, which nice. like, Maybe I get there, maybe I don't, but like it's still fun in the process. So like, oh, for I'm sure, the process is 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 the is the thing, man. The getting there yeah, is yeah. like the yeah. the cool part. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm I'm trying to reverse engineer how I got good at motocross and kind of okay. like the like the social elements of you know when you ask about like what was that step like? Well, I lived it, so I I kind of I know I remember what was going on during those steps. So I'm kind of yes. like, what was that? How did I, how's it looking? Well, it seems like you know you have ways of looking at things and having fun and keep them going just being consistent. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. I'm trying to kind of apply it in the same way. So this is a, a way of me doing something fun and mm -hmm. offering help and rebranding and kind of um, resurfacing my name a little bit as well. Oh, for sure. I'm sure people are going to welcome that with open arms. Even like <clears throat> the way you're doing it, it's like, it's very professional, very yeah. easily digestible. So like when I watch the clips, I'm like, oh crap, that does make sense. Like momentum was key for Kyroli in this corner. And like, I, I think it's really well yeah. done. I think a lot of people can, can get, you know, can get some use out of it. And it's a quick blurb that, you know, yeah, like dude, our attention yeah. spans, us yeah. dirt, like we all have ADHD. Yeah, we're all yeah. spazzes. Like yeah, we need so that quick it. spurt. So no, that's, that's, that's so awesome, cool. man. That's awesome. So like if people want to get in contact with you and, yeah. you know, you, use you as a trainer or get some advice from you, where can they reach out to you? It's, and, my, and it's just up? my social stuff, man. All, I'm, yeah. My website's ianchuttle.com. And that has a lot of information. If you're looking for more stuff about kind of my, just my reputation and like what my results were and yep. more of a story on my backstory, but, or my Instagram and everything's at iTreadle or yeah. ITMX training. Um, but yeah, like socials are a way to contact me. That's where I'm putting out all my stuff too. Awesome. And we're going to link that below as well. So if you guys have any interest in checking out Ian and what Amazing. he's got going on, uh, definitely check that out. And again, we're brought to you um, all thanks to the kind people at FXR Racing and Intake Breathing. Uh, those two guys hook us up big time, get kitted out, look super cool on the track and perform even better with that intake breathing band. And we're going to link our promo codes below so you guys can get hooked up with that as well. Um, one thing that, that uh, we started doing, we've got, I also have another moto show with my buddy Manny and we kind of break it down as two knuckleheads looking at the races and stuff like that. We do a drip check section. So we always yeah. look at what people are wearing, check out their kits, yeah. who has the coolest kits right now. Obviously Kenny's killing it. These kits are so fire. Uh, one thing that I liked about you when you were racing, you always had the coolest Fox racing kits, everything you had on, I wanted to have man. And like, so like, I pretty, pretty much had all of your, your kids coming up. Um, how cool was that man to be like the poster child for like a, such an iconic company? Like, did you have say in what you wanted to wear or like, did you just kind of just say here, here's some new cool stuff. Got, try it out. Well, I got linked up with, they, so Fox was pretty much my first sponsor. I think I was, I was still in grade school when they, when I, when I, when I got picked up by them, but I mm -hmm. sent them resumes cause I was winning I, I was winning national titles and I was sending them resumes. My mm -hmm. mom was just hitting and blowing them up like all the time. And finally they, they yeah. sent me gear. I remember jumping on the trampoline with Fox gear on dude. And I was like nine or 10 years old. Like, so I was, so I've known these, like I still to this day talk to the guy from Fox. He's, one of, he's like a brother to me. He was there while I was in a coma, man. Oh, like, wow. yeah, they're family to me. That's who I would go to when I would get hurt. And I would say at his house, he'd take me to, to the physical therapy place that I was yeah. seeing in California. Yeah. So I've known those guys forever. And they even came to the farm track that you've seen on Verb and did yep. photo shoots there. And some of the magazines that we were in were from our house in Florida. Yeah. So the whole Fox family, I've known them for a long time. That's, That's why I was in, I was loyal to them my entire amateur career. Yeah. And I split with them when I went pro, but we still stayed connected, you know, because that was yeah. his family. That's um, freaking awesome, man. 
But fa- I mean, they uh, they pretty much controlled everything as far as yeah. gear wise. They would say, you know, all the Loretta stuff was picked out way ahead of time. We wore the stuff months ahead of time to get photo shoots and mm-hmm. all the gear. Like so, everything is as far. Yeah, they kind of have they they know what they know what they're looking for. I think when it comes yeah. to that, so they they tell you what to wear. It, it, it's super cool, man. Because like that was that was when you saw like the new cool kits you know yeah. what I mean? when you had like the goat yeah. creations in the ranks videos, or you yeah. got the catalog. Now we get the sneak previews through IG through TikTok or whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? We can, we can yeah. see that stuff, but like, man, people were rushing to grab that Fox catalog to see like, what's coming yeah. out, dude. What's, what are the new, like yeah. cool kids wear? You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, mean, I know it sounds super nostalgic for a lot of people out there, but th- this, that was like the coolest portion of like moto <laughs> man. magazines were cool dude yeah they were so rad and, yeah. and honestly like i think there's there's a lot of argument i think like the best time in amateurs was like has to be 2005 man that was like the quintessential like 65 class was booming 50 class was bloom, booming super many 85 125 like that was like that was the year when like we had so much talent so much yeah. depth in every field and like it wasn't just one brand or just one gear company. Everybody that, was just throwing down. And that actually reminds me of something mm-hmm. to, to loop back around to that um, yeah. topic about what we're talking about is fitness actually, is it physical? Is it real? Is it really mental or is it actually physical? So yeah. 2005, do you remember Jason Lawrence, right? Yep. Yep. Do you remember him winning outdoor nationals? Yes. Like, do you, dude, he never trained. And so that's why I'm yeah. saying if, if, if 30 minute motors are nothing but riding a bicycle hard, how would someone like J law win a moto and kill it and not even train? dude? Yeah. Yeah. Dude just partied and ate donuts. And, and I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying it's yeah, possible yeah. to do that without it, like it's that's, that's just something tells me that there's some part of it is more mental than physical. Yeah. If he can do that. So that, that's, a, that's an interesting thing to look at. Dude, that's crazy. That yeah, a lot of people don't they they're uh, they forget how cool that was that J law would literally just show up and just wax it, man. And just kill Absolutely. it yeah, and not even and just barely try yeah and get in everybody's head then go yeah, flip exactly. a car and go party yeah. and be lot and you know what i mean yeah yeah I, I, I wonder the stories that that guy has man like they have to be just insane but, i mean but hey dude talk about someone who's good at that's good at losing is someone who can get over a loss quickly who doesn't yes. really care right yeah you yeah. gotta find that happy medium out people like i think people who are good at that are people like people the just the the fun like you people are having fun like cooper and Flessinger, um, yep. seems like Jet Lawrence is pretty is is pretty cool. Um, yep. Anderson's good at it. Like they, who, where they can just take a loss and just be like, "Hey, dude, f it." Like, I'll next week I'll try it again. Like, and they and they just kind of like they they kind of look at it at face value and, and then get over it. They're not yeah. taking it emotionally and letting it mess up their head. You know? Oh, a hundred percent. I think that that makes a big difference. If you that's undervalued that, skill, I think, dude. Yeah, it's resetting, man. Like yeah, resetting goes, goes wrong, doesn't go yeah. your way. Reset, and that's that goes for racing too. You got you hit a corner wrong, reset yeah. and continue yeah. your lap and finish strong, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, for sure. This this was super fun, man. I, I had an absolute blast on this one. It was super cool getting a chance to to pick your brain and and yeah. and, and kind of. Go down memory lane a little bit, man. That yeah, was, that was cool. That's, yeah, that's I love doing this. Freaking it's awesome. awesome. Um, guys, thank you for, for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this a little bit, share the video. Show your friends. You know what I mean? Show, share the love because we, we have fun yeah, doing yeah. this. Uh, again, please check out Ian's stuff. Link below. And don't forget that we have our TCE MX internship programs that are open right now. You guys can go and work with a professional race team. Get the hands-on experience you need in a various, various amount of topics like video creation, social media media, mechanics, you name it, we can hook it up. Uh, so that's going to be linked below as well. Ian, this was super fun, man. I uh, definitely want to keep talking to you. Guys, if you like the video, again, share the video. And thank you. We'll see you on the next one. All right, man.